In the first part of this video series, I showed you how to build an appealing and functional background for a glass vivarium. In this video, I'll be moving on to discuss setting up the foundations of the enclosure, which in this build will include a raised area with broad-leaved plants and a shallow pool. Once again, I've designed this part of the setup with its usability to the future herp inhabitants in mind, and this is going to become more apparent as we progress through the video. My final note before we crack on is that if you're wondering what products I've used in this video, then there are links in the description which you can follow to view the items on Amazon. Now, with that, let's get straight into it. Perhaps the most important feature for the base of a humid vivarium is a drainage layer. This will allow water to drain freely from any substrate that we add later on. If this couldn't happen, the stagnant environment created would provide poor conditions for plant growth and cleanup crew establishment. In this build, it will become especially important seeing as the pond area and drainage layer will be continuous. There are several ways to make a drainage layer, but the most effective in my experience is the false bottom. To make this, the main item you're going to require is plastic egg crate or light diffuser as I have here. The first step is to take the light diffuser and think about how you're going to cut it to make a void. Here, I'm considering how large I want the land area to be and how deep the pond area will become, because the drainage layer must be at least as deep as the pond to keep the land section high and dry. Once I add in my head what I wanted the false bottom to look like, I could start putting it together. Flat sections are easy, as all you've got to do is click the pieces together. To make the edges of the false bottom, side cutters were used to break up the pieces as desired. Then, cable ties were employed to hold the edges to the part made earlier. The framework of the false bottom is now complete. Because it spans such a wide area, I decided to put some extra bits of light diffuser in the middle to act as supports, preventing the top from bowing under the weight of the substrate which will be placed above. As it stands, our false bottom won't work particularly well because it'll let substrate through as easily as water. The next step, then, is to wrap it in weed control fabric, which will permit the passage of water, but not soil. With the false bottom installed, I began to add sand on one side. This will be the substrate at the bottom of the water section. On the other side of the false bottom, I added expanded clay pellets. If I were to just fill this gap with the same substrate I'll be using on top of the drainage layer, then it will become stagnant and cloud up the water, recalling that the water in the drainage section will be continuous with the pond. Weed control fabric was placed over the clay pellets to stop soil entering this part of the drainage layer. I used orchid bark as the first layer of the terrestrial substrate. This is going to allow water to flow more readily than soil, so if our drainage layer does overflow, then the orchid bark provides a buffer zone before our soil is going to be submerged. With the groundwork finished, we can now move on to the really fun bits of the build. To start, 
I added some gravel to smooth the transition from land to water, and toyed about adding slate chippings for the same purpose. Moving on to the land area, I used topsoil as a substrate with a bit of orchid bark mixed in to aid with drainage. Pieces of cork bark were used to hold the substrate back from rolling into the water section. In real time, the last thing I did for the day was to make a start at planting the land area, and it's on this topic that I'm going to dwell for a minute. You see, I see many vivarium builds on the internet where people really do not give enough care or attention to the plants. There's enough channels out there making tanks which do look brilliant to begin with, but they use nutrient void substrates like ABG mix or scrimp on lighting by opting for cheap shop lights, and the plants just don't do well long term. Next time you watch someone's tank update video, just look at the plants. Are their bromeliads plain green, their phytonia leggy and their mosses dull? If this is the case, then the chances are that they've fell foul of the things that I've just described. Not only is this a shame in the realm of aesthetics, but it's a shame for the animals in the enclosure, as if you choose the right plants and give them enough time and space to flourish, you'll really see your animals interacting with them. For this reason, I decided to sleep on my planting arrangements, and came back to them in the morning with a fresh eye. <sighs> right, so it's the morning after I got done with all of this stuff so yesterday is when I actually finished putting all of the moss in the background and I sort of set up all this ground area and I put the first plants in um, now today what I'm going to do is I will finish off the rest of the planted section and I will also get going with the water section. Now the plants that I have put in already, I'm not particularly happy with how they are um, and having slept on it, I definitely want to move them around. So I'll get cracking with doing that and then the land section over here will sort of be done. And then in the rest of this video, you will see me planting up the water section and all of this stuff down here. But whatever, you don't want to hear about what the plan is. You just want to see it getting done. So let's get on with it. What I'm trying to do is maximise the space over which the geckos can climb, which is why, you will have noticed, I have chosen to use plants which, for the most part, have nice broad leaves, as I've learned through experience that these are what the geckos prefer to clamber over. The branches are going to offer climbing opportunities whilst the plants are still growing in. Now, we complete the water section by adding more slate chippings and some aquatic plants. Once settled in, the plant should grow emerging from the water. I added moss, liverwort and baby's tears cuttings to the edge of the water region. In time, these should grow clinging to the weed control fabric, hiding the border between land and water. And now to add water. Leaf litter and seed pods are going to provide cover for the cleanup crew, as well as the terrestrial herbs which will be added to this vivarium in due course. Now 
Now for a good spray down and we've finished this stage of the Vivarium build. So as it stands, the inside of this enclosure is now complete. All that I've basically got to wait to, wait to happen is for the plants to grow in, because at the minute it does look like really brown and cork barky, but enclosures always look like that when you set them up. And um, you've just got to give it, give it a month or two and it will just be a complete green mass in here, or I hope it will anyway. Now I haven't actually finished planting this enclosure because there is at least one, possibly two, maybe three, depending on how I decide, um, plants that I still want to put in here, um, but those are growing as cuttings in the old line Dagerco enclosure, and at the moment, I don't want to go in there and take the cuttings, because, well, yesterday I found a third baby line Dagerco, and as they lay their eggs in pairs, that means that there is probably four baby line Dagecos in there now, and uh, they are not afraid at all, they will sit on the plants right at the front of the enclosure, unlike the adults, which are totally shy. Um, and so basically I'm just a bit afraid to go in there with the scissors and go snapping through plants when there might be geckos sat in them. <laughs> so the plan there is basically catch the geckos, put them in here, and then I can take the final cuttings and this lot will be fully planted. There is one, two, three, possibly four, maybe five other lamps going on this enclosure. So. I want to like dedicate a whole video to what those lamps are, what I've got them for, why I think they are necessary, and yeah, that'll be the next video in this series. But anyway, without rabbiting on too much longer, I'm going to call this the end of the video. So for now, I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example, and I will see us all in the next video. So that's it for now. Bye guys!